You alright, Chris and Nick are yet? Retro Eds? And then Dab! And Dab! Dab, baby, Dab, baby, Dab, baby, Dab! What's happening here, like? <laughs> uh, I'll huh? go out and you're, and you're Mr. Nick now, so bye. Go no, on, get out. It's my, my oh, turn. Out, out. It's my man. Get game. out, go you, on. You, no, you get out. Nice. You're replacing Chris. Shh. Gavin Nick here. Welcome to the Wobbly Eds. <laughs> Right, I'm back. Oh, we Nick, come on. Okay. Oh. What's this like? Oh. Team Chunky Lizard or something? <laughs> Team Squishy Lizard. <laughs> well, we've got we've got two YouTube channels, right? Metal Heads, Squishy Lizard. All right, Chunky Lizard here. I'm going to do a video. Uh, Metal Lizard. There, yeah, that sounds better. Metal Heads put with Squishy Lizard. Metal Lizard. We've made a new channel. Well, you're right, I'm one half of Retro Eds. Yeah, I'm one half of Squishy Lizard. And you're all, you're, you're of, all squishy of Squishy Lizard. Lizard. I'm all of Squishy Lizard and... Together, we Retro yeah, Lizard. Yeah, this is... this. I'm replacing this guy here. Yeah, so we're Retro Lizards now. Alright, Retro Eds here, and we're back for a time chat video. We're going to do a how games have changed kind of thing from way back 8 bit to as far back as you remember, right? We've now up to modern Xbox One and PS4. Anything that's involved with really is just kind of. It was a topic thrown over by your wife, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. She just said to us, why don't, why don't we talk about how we think games have changed? I mean, mm. you'll be more suited. For the new gen, because I haven't got a new gen computer, I mean, latest I've got a PS3. Um, but I think starting from 8 to 16 to 32, but I mean, even back then when they were getting newer and that, it was just it used to blow my mind. The, the leaps and bounds from back then, yeah, from one generation to the next, was so much more than it is now. I mean, what's your earliest kind of game in memory? Spectrum. Spectrum. No, no, no. Me, yeah, my main ones were Spectrum. I can't remember what my cousin had. My cousin, it was probably a Spectrum yeah. or maybe, I don't know, the Commodore 64 out before a Spectrum. I'm not sure. I think they're about the same time, would it not? It was something like that. My brother got the Spectrum, but my cousins got something. And all I remember is it was like a bird's eye view and you were just going up the screen with enemies coming down and you just sort of moved left and right and shot up. It was like an army game type thing. Yeah. And it was hard as out, like. I mean, don't get us wrong, I was about four, something like that. And I found out that if you just stopped to the left, you could get quite far <laughs> before you died. I mean, you couldn't get all the way up the screen to complete the first level on out. But that was my best chance of getting quite far into the game and having a longer game on it. Even though there was no gameplay, yeah, you just stopped on the left hand side of the screen, and you had the joystick in your hand for thirty seconds rather than five seconds, which I was more than happy to do back then. It was like the TV control; you always used to fight over who got to use yeah. the TV control back in the day for that one out of like every half hour when you got to change the channel. <laughs> just one of them things. See, for me, my earliest computer memory is going to be down my nana's house, and we had like a, one of those, it wasn't even a named computer, it was one of those things that had like, pang on. In television type thing. Yeah, and it was like, it had two controllers on a bit of wire with a yeah, turning knob, and you yeah. did like the pang. But also had like a shooting game on. How old are you, Chris? Why? Was it when Pang was brand new, was it? No, it wasn't when Pang was brand new. It's just <laughs> was that shot. when the minor strike was going on, was it? <laughs> but she also had like it had to come for gun, and I remember the gun was like a handgun. But you also had, you could like screw like a shoulder thing onto it and a scope thing, so it turned like a proper rifle. I remember just putting Out it together. Handgun. Yeah, and it was like proper. <laughs> but it was like one was old. It was like it was like wooden with like orange buttons on it was like one was football one was ah uh, yeah nice I have thing. seen it I know yeah never was. and the graphics from then where it was basically just like the the blocks little square pixels one it it was it was tennis and then you could tennis. have double tennis tennis where it double was tennis. one panel or two paddles and there was it? one called ice hockey which was basically exactly the same game it was yeah. it was something like that and yeah and then it was like a shooting game on it and all and it was 
But from there, to be blown away like, by that as a kid, and then from there over to like the Mass System and Nintendo, just the jump in graphics alone then. I mean, mm, the mm. game Mission Impossible I picked up again recently, but back then my the image in my head from playing that game as a kid, I, it, it's like a little film in your head. It, isn't it crazy how like, when a new computer come out, when it was like 8, 6, in, but the graphics were like, Gaming could not get any better than this. This is so real. It's like watching a cartoon. Yeah, it's like, why? why <laughs> it's it like was? watching a film now, isn't it? That's the thing. What game was it? Where it is like a film, um, a cartoon. You'll probably have it, do you? What, on the Nintendo? No, it was a, a, a Super Nintendo or Mega Drive. Like, a, what was it, Flashback or? Flashback or Forgotten Worlds, so that was it. Yeah. And I remember when that came out, it was, it was like, wow, watching a cartoon, eh? Yeah. And, and yeah. The, it, yeah, it's the cell shaded, wasn't it? So, yeah. yeah, it's always like the pinnacle of game. Like you know, what I mean, how can I get any more realistic than this? How can I get more realistic than this? And every generation. See, I always used to think it took a massive step back on the sixty four, and when everything went to three D polygons and all that, I always looked at that as a step back. Back in the day, I still do now. Like to be honest, like, I do now, but I, back then I did as well. I mean. I missed the N sixty four. I missed out completely, so I can't say anything on that. Even the PS one though, I found I thought that was a bit of a Is step it? back. Yeah, well, I've been blown soldier, being yeah. blown, blown away. I thought it was great when I, I first played that. I, just like the whole, I bought that in Woolworths and tried yeah. to get the money back for it. And they <laughs> told us I had no chance. Like I, I thought it was great. I, the amount of time I pointed at and just like. Now when I look back at it, it's like kind of like you put like tanks, wouldn't you? Like just get massive bulk of a fella. Yeah, running up. But no, I thought the graphics were amazing. But like saying the Mega Drive when I first got released playing Sonic on that with the sound and putting headphones in the computer and just being blown away. And like you're saying and now when you look at like saying I mean later when I've got a PS3 in it. I'm playing Call of Duty on there. And even thinking back now to a game on the NES up to the PS3, it's absolutely amazing. Mm. It's just Wait well, you, you my, think my first going to stop. My first like Home computer was my brother's Spectrum, Spectrum Plus 3. And then I got the Nintendo, the original Nintendo, and the jump up from that was unbelievable. Like, yeah. Because the Spectrum had what, like six colours at a time yeah, on the screen? They both 8 bit system as well. Is the Spectrum 8 bit? Yeah, I'm sure it's no, Spectrum it can't be. Well. It can't be. That's terrible, that, like. The, the colour palette on that was just dreadful. I'm sure, yeah. I'm, I could be wrong if correct this moment, I'm sure the spectrum is an 8-bit system. I don't, it might be, but I'm pretty sure it cannot be, like... But, like I say, from from that to the Nintendo, and then the Nintendo to the Super Nintendo... Why, from the Nintendo... Just would leaps you, and bounds, Yeah, what, what would you say the biggest jump is between systems? Probably them. The Nintendo, Super Nintendo, or just the difference in... Just yeah, because because like I say, the Super Nintendo I f- thinks far better than the Nintendo sixty four. You don't get fog on the Super Nintendo, do you? Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, so I mean, I know it's a total different way of making the games from one to the other with the wireframes and all that kind of nonsense. But and the Super NES, I'd rather chip in the cartridges rather than. Yeah. See, for me, I missed out on the N sixty four, so I went from SNES to GameCube. So I went, I did the jump into 3D correctly, if that makes sense, because it ironed everything out on the N64. So did you miss out on the PS1 as well then, or did you go no, Super so NES, PS1, I went then to, the GameCube? Yeah, I went PS1, I probably, so, went, I probably went PS2 and then back to GameCube. Right. I think I didn't... I don't know, the GameCube just passed me by, it was like, it was only probably uh, Super Smash Brothers or Brawl Brothers or whatever you wanted to call this. That I wanted on the GameCube. Like, even the GameCube only played the big hitters on there. I only played Mario, Mario Zelda. Kart, Zelda, um, Luigi's Mansion. I only played the big hitters on the GameCube. Like I mean, I probably I bet there's only five, six games that I really put time into. Mm. That's hence uh, that, hence why you look at my collections. I think I've got two games, three, three games for the GameCube. Because again, I only want I only want the Zelda's even N sixty four. I've got a handful of games N sixty four. It, that's why it's mainly, I think it's mainly 8 and 16 bit that I, I like the click for because them is where all my memories are from. Well, when the GameCube and uh, PS1 and all that, that's been when you're going out on the streets with your mates and stuff, yeah. was it? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone sort of must have gone through that phase of like 
being a kid in your house all the time, playing on your games, and then you get to like early teenagers, a bit younger maybe, going out with all your mates onto the streets, causing trouble and whatnot, <laughs> you know, boyish, boyish pranks and all that, or whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna call it. Yeah. Um. And then you go back into it you when you. You always miss a couple of generations, don't yeah, you? Yeah, a bit wet. Well, at least the, well, the generation. Probably yeah. one generation, I because they do last quite a while. The last one was like eight years or something, I think, from release of 360 to the release of the Xbox One. It was about eight years, I right. think. Oh, yeah, about how games change. And are you going to give your opinions on Neo Gen then, Gab? Because you're more expert than me. Well, like I say, I don't think it's a massive leap forward. They do, yeah. But it seems that everyone's hung up on graphics. Graphics don't make a good game. Yeah. They do help towards it, don't get us wrong. But the the three sixty PS three graphics were really, 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 really good. Especially by the end of the console's life. And when the Xbox One and PS4 came out, they didn't quite master the graphics and all that, yeah, but there wasn't that much yeah. in it. And the biggest the biggest disappointment for me is for the for the like Xbox One, PS4 is the downloading the games onto the consoles. Yeah, that, ah, that, I hate that. That sounds terrible. It's, that really you, does. Wait, that sounds terrible. It's like when I first got a PC, it was like, what? You have to put the game onto the computer. You can't just put it in and play it. No, you have to download it for. I don't know. On the PC, it was probably half an hour or something. On them, it used to be the next day when you got to play yeah. your brand new game. You have to you have like, to buy the day in advance. Yeah, if you want another game, you have to like, delete the old one off to put the new one on. Oh. Um, where the, Some games, that's too big. Yeah, you, you get a 500 gigabyte memory. and like I'll tell you what I've heard. I, obviously, I don't own money. I put the Switch. Because you're on game cards, apparently there's a couple of games coming out that the game's too big for the card. You have to download so it. So you have to download it and put it on an S, extra SD card if you have SD card memory. So basically, you're going to have your game spanned across the game card and SD card. That, that's... I hate it. Nintendo is just... That, that is, sums them up to me, like... They're stuck in the way is that much that they... So, in other words, you have to have a copy of a game that you've bought. You have to you have to download a game onto an SD card yeah. that you have to buy separate just half the after game. you've bought the game. Yeah, but you can't even put two SD cards well, in one you'll case you'll for you're you're a, like that. You'll be able to get a Nintendo branded SD card today, say for triple the price than a normal <laughs> SD card, won't you? Wait, right, they'll, they'll come out with their own brand of SD cards that you can only put it on. Yeah. So they get more money off you that way. <sighs> that's that's to be fair, that's one of the main things that puts me off modern game and just the stuff like that. Yeah, and I mean the downloading of games. It, that's it, a, it's, it is that much goes into them. Don't get us wrong. Like the graphics will take a lot more memory, and the games are long as out. I mean, the probably one of the biggest differences other than graphics is in the gameplay how you don't have continues. It's just yeah. unlimited continues, unlimited lives with save states basically so you save your game if you die you go back to your save that that must have made the biggest difference to from old school games to modern say, games what, what, what's harder old school on your games well old school because unless unless you have a cheat for them or like game genie or something i mean the first the first game i really remember where you had infinite continues dying didn't matter other than the fact that you had to go back was odd world yeah Abe's Odyssey Oddworld on the PS1. Resident Evil had it as well, but that was it, probably been the first, but Oddworld was the the first one where I really noticed it because you died a hell of a lot. Every state, every level, every screen, you died on that at least once, I, you know. I think that's one reason why I like retro games so much because you would always say, oh, I've got a short attention span. I need stuff to keep us interested. And if I'm playing a long game where I've got to... To be heard, the only game that's hooked me like that is Breath of the Wild. And I think that's only because it's Zelda famed. If that was just a normal game without the Zelda fame, I mm. wouldn't have put as many hours into it. Because for me, I like the old 8 bit, 6 8 bit. Put a game in, have a bash through a night. Then, however far you get, that's it. You, you either write this continue down or you turn it off, and that's the game over. Yeah. Whereas if I've got to keep going back for 100 hours, if every game I played that put 100 hours into it, I couldn't do it. Uh, they're, not, they're not that bad. Some of them, yeah, are. I mean, that's an extreme. You've you you just got I mean? Skyrim there, Chris. That's like a hundred hours easy. That, but we know I'll never play it. So, 
But like even most games, I don't know. I haven't got the. I tend to think a lot of these companies make a game with hundred hours. So if you if you are that into it, you can play it for hundred and not get sick. But that's like side quests and all sorts like that. You know that Grand Theft Auto started a lot of that. Yeah, what I was the game I was thinking of and all into Grand Theft Auto was um Grand Theft Auto Five. I'm halfway through it, and I just kind of lost interest in it. Yeah, I, I I struggled to finish Grand Theft Auto Five. Like when when that was new out, I just ploughed on through. I think the the word I used at the time was. But if, there's a lot of PS. I've just looked there. I've seen a Warriors for your PSP game. I've got mm -hmm. that to play on the PS2 still now. And when I want to play it, but I know that I'm going to have to put the time in where for me. The Warriors, I, you have to, yeah, you have to, you have to do the tutorial and do all the boring yeah. stuff at the start on the PS2. And I, especially, I have that much stuff going on this one time. I'm ever trying like edit videos or a channel or do something else or I'm doing something, get ready for a stream on a Sunday night. Like, yeah. If I'm in the man cave, I just want a quick blast of summer. I just want to put a game on and have half an hour. I mean, I was talking to you the other night and had a quick go over Nez Open and another couple of Nez games because I yeah. can. I can have half an hour bash and knock them off and then not worry about them again. If I'm playing a game, I've got to go and put two hours in on a Monday night and then go back again Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night to get the game done. Wait, I think another problem with a lot of these modern games is the buttons, especially for like hack and slash type games. If you don't like continuously play it if you, you you can't take like two weeks off because you'll have to sort yeah. of half relearn really the buttons. Learn the game again yeah especially like combos and stuff like that it's all right if you yeah. play it like every day or every other day or something like that because it's fresh in your memory it, it is crazy how a game becomes second nature doesn't it? Even yeah if like if you're playing like a college with your first person shooter or i'm playing the zelda or even fighting games like you're sitting there like a street fighter game you get another you know, move set and it is crazy that like, it, it, you don't even think they it becomes second nature when you're playing yeah, the game. Yeah, Street Fighter is sort of embedded in me. Yeah. It's like riding a bike, you know. I, I don't think I'll ever forget the Street Fighter <laughs> type stuff. But, uh, yeah, um, I'll tell you what brings uh, comes to mind when I'm on about the buttons is Dying Light. Xbox One, PS4 game. And uh, it's a bit different to the usual because, for me spending years and years and years playing on them is the Call of Duty is the normal button layout. Yeah. And not all games have like where you aim downsides, throw grenades, throw your special grenades, shoot and run as a click on your buttons or something. Not all games have the same they need different buttons for different things. So when they change it slightly from that, it's sort of like it has to be fresh in your memory to do that new way. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yes. It's sort of it like... Kind of, yeah. Yeah. So it's sort of like Dying Light. It does take you quite a while. I mean, I know uh, Big Daddy C and Lee have both played it and they said, like, I think they're on about playing the expansion for it. And Paul says, uh, Big Daddy said, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to have a, a few goes on it to re-remember re re the buttons. Yeah. For when I play it, because, like, by the end of it, you do get really good at it, but it does take some getting used to, which is another problem with having, like, what, how many buttons the modern joypads have? Yeah. Six. They, they've got, like, at least ten eight, buttons, eight, really, eight, don't eight, they? Yeah, ten, including yeah. start, yeah. you got start and select, and often they're two different menus. Yeah. One, one might be, like, yeah backpack and the other one's a pause menu with all your options and everything on or one's a map and the other one's yeah that's why you can't beat yeah. your a b or one two i think super ness that that was enough buttons it wouldn't yeah. be enough for like a first person shooter call of duty type game but that was enough for like platformers and stuff like yeah. that you know yeah i like the snes pad what, yeah. what about have you done any the vr yet gov Video responses. <laughs> Virtual reality. No, I haven't. So I must admit that's my mate got one. I had to go over it, and that's the most modernest game I've done. Like I said, I haven't got new gen. Did you play the Batman? I played about yeah, I played about ten minutes of Batman, and that was incredible. I was Batman. I mean, I'm in the back cave, and you can you look down, you see the suit, you see the gloves, you can <laughs> look in the mirror, and it's incredible. 
I saw a video what? on, I think it was Facebook, the world's worst Batman. I've seen it, yeah. It's brilliant, I've like, go and watch that if you, yeah. Have you seen when he's the world's worst surgeon at all? Oh, it's just I saw a quick clip like, by... Stab, 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 and do it. Stuff. Just, just when he's talking about stuff yeah. as well, it's just kind of funny. I, I don't know who it is, I'm going to have to watch him and sub to him or something like that. Just, I think I was in the van or something like that and I was just laughing my head off at him, it was brilliant. But anyway, sorry, <laughs> yep. the v, VR, I, I was... I was that close to trying to find a PS4 Pro. If the, if more people were selling them second hand, I would have had one ready Wait. for when I got a VR Christmas. I must admit, I've never been blown away like that about gaming than have since probably way back for like when I played the SNES or maybe the GameCube for the first time. I don't know, I think you were pretty blown away by the Switch, weren't you? Yeah, you were all set to get one of them on release. Yeah, well, I haven't got one yet, have I? No. Um, you, your fire soon no, fizzled out for that one, didn't it? No, well, I'm getting one, but I mm. was I was blown away by the concept of the Switch, if that makes sense. I wasn't blown away by the graphics or anything like that. I, I, don't know, I, computer. I, I mean, I still don't get what it is. I really don't. Is what? it a handheld or is it a... Oh, it's... it's. Why well, no, it's a full-blown system. You can play handheld, if that makes sense. It's, uh, it's, I think it suffers from the way you where there's just... Where, where, where's, where's the games at? Why are they coming? Apparently, if you ask um, Paul, he keeps saying they're coming. <sighs> oh. That's just blind yeah. Nintendo fanboyness with yeah. Paul say though, but, isn't it? Yeah, but I was blown away by the concept of this, which I don't like the idea of it. At first, I wasn't, but when I say one property and say it in action, it is quite good. And I was away on all them in May properties, and every night I was in the balcony having a couple of beers playing Sonic Mania. On, mm. on, and literally, yeah, and you, that's what kind of blew me away. It's just a full-blown computer on the balcony having a couple of beers. See, it's not a computer if you're playing on a handheld screen, though, for me. But it's got the processors of a full-blown computer, though, so it's... A PS... A PS Vita and a 3DS... They're just as good for me. Yeah. It doesn't have to have the full-blown computer components inside. It's all about the TV size with, with something like that for me. Yeah. Between a laptop... Between a... Well, it's like a laptop and a PC, isn't it? A desktop. Yeah. But anyway, back to my original story, so it's all VR. Yeah, we, we, we shot yeah, off on a bit of a tandem there. But honestly, that absolutely blew me away. I could not believe it. Um, I, I played the Batman, I played a couple of, like, of the free trial puzzle games and stuff no like that. No kind of motion sickness then? None. None, None at all. all. I, I, I took the... Brilliant. I mean, I played one called... Um, I can't think of their name now, but no, like the big mech suits out of a a um, Yeah. It was basically that, but you're playing football in there when you're like yeah, right. kind of knocking this ball about. It was incredible. And I actually contemplated for about a week or so after. Yeah, yeah you were looking into it. I was really looking into getting a PS4 and VR, but then I kind of thought, I'll only play it a few times, then I'll be back on my Nintendo. I know I would be. I'd be so I kind of got it back out of my system, but I was I really, really contemplating getting it mm. because it was... Just the feeling of playing, I'm sure the first time you do it, probably you'll be blown away. And it I is. I did the... notice in uh, CEX in Darlow that they had uh, one set up for demonstration or something Didn't like they? that. I, I never. Hey, you should give it a go because honestly, it's, it, that there is definitely the future of gaming. I don't know if they were going to charge you for it like Game did or what, or you'd have to. It was, it's always busy in that one, in that CEX. So I would imagine that they'd say, oh, I'll come back in half an hour right. when it's a bit quieter and you'd never get a go on it. The thing what sounds good for VR for me and all is you can actually just use the goggles as just a screen and all so even if you're playing a normal PS game you can just sit back and just like have that as a big screen which is kind of good you know what I mean so you're not just be sat in bed <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you could down. do yeah so I want to tell you you're yeah. sat there playing a the game on the goggles which is kind of sound and everything as well is it yeah so I, I did really think about getting one and but yeah no but like I say I was, I was seriously looking into the PS4 Pro I would have probably, if they didn't bring the Pro out, I would have probably got the PS4. But it's like, why get the normal one when the Pro's obviously that bit better, especially later on down the line, the regular one might tend to struggle a bit more. Yeah. I don't think they'll bring a specific game out where you have to have a Pro to play it. But I think the Pro will handle any particular game. Oh, that of course it will, yeah. I'm not bothered about the 4K graphics or anything like that. I don't care. I've got a 4K telly. I'm not bothered that it's got 4K. It's just a HD telly for me. You know? Just what? kind of the way. 
the way I am, I suppose. But I must say, I'm saying there, like how games are changing. But for me, playing that VR, and I've, I've said it for the nerds, the snares, everything, I can't see games getting any more realistic <laughs> than they are playing that. Unless, the, honestly, the next step has got to be kind of like full blown, like, insertion of like virtual reality of like kind of Mate, just yeah, implanted we'll do, we'll in it? there. Yeah, I we'll... mean, you can still tell that in that computer game that they are computer graphics. Yeah. It's not like me looking at you now. Yeah. The, the close, don't get us wrong, but you'd still, if. Yeah, I would still be able to tell if there was a picture of Chris oh, and then the don't a virtual image yeah, of him. Don't get us wrong, it will get more and more realistic mm. and it'll, get, it'll keep going until it is pretty much just a life simulation. Basically, I've. Of where, they, where, they probably just come up with a, I saw a film years ago where it was like body swapping yeah VR body swapping like if I had a meeting in Los Angeles I could pay like I, I would pay a, a premium and my mind would go into a, a, <laughs> a dummy's body with another person yeah. in LA type thing you know and you could swap bodies for weekends and stuff yeah. like that it was it was, it was a just a tangent yeah <laughs> But that, that could that could be a thing. Why not? Yeah. But it will be. But that's. I watched an episode of the Gadget Show a while ago now. Probably a couple of years ago actually. Gadget and he, Show. Uh... And he did a Call of Duty where he had like everything set up. He had like a roll on my floor, so you could actually walk. Oh, when yeah. you actually went, and he had the gun set up, so the trigger was in the thing. And With one of them frictionless. Yeah. Floors where you and, can run on the spot. And he had the headset on, so basically wherever he looked, the camera looked, and the gun fired. It. And if that's where that's the future of gaming, what's going to be where it's full of body. You see, I immersion. disagree. Because it's too much work. Yeah, I, I suppose. It is too much yeah, work. I suppose that's the, that would be the gimmick you're playing. But you're, yeah. When I, as soon as you said that there, I agree now, because the whole point of gaming is you want to sit down and enjoy well, the it's game. It's like the be, Wii. The, the, everyone said, oh, you can't play the Wii sitting down. As soon as I got my Wii, when they ran you out, sat down. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Just like that on the couch, you know, it's like why can't you sit oh. down and do it? Yeah. I used to play tennis. No strike. I used to play tennis, aye. Yeah, no strike. It's like yeah. yeah you got never faced stood up. Right, you're not supposed to play it stood up, but it's it's like no I'm too I'm too lazy for that, I'm too old. <laughs> but yeah, it, that would be very much gimmicky. Yeah. And don't get us wrong, it would get you fit. Running around with like your gun and on a zero thing thing yeah well i suppose maybe will be where you just kind of sit down and get immersed into a, something in, into a game mm. i don't know you, you, it would probably be where you just think about doing something and it happens better rather than, than having a control or something better than life on um, red dwarf the future uh, the future of gaming isn't it <laughs> what was the, what was the one where lister <laughs> wore the groin <laughs> attachment out <laughs> in two months or something Oh, that was like the VR yeah. that he had. Where oh, yeah, I can't recall that game, but that's like coming in your public style, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was brilliant, that, like. <laughs> no, uh, but anything get off the Red Dwarf, Jack. Yeah, back off the Red Dwarf. <laughs> off the Red Dwarf, aye. But, no, so do you want to kind of sum anything up about how games have changed, Gav, going from NES all the way, your mass system all the way up to, or even the Spectrum, as you, you mentioned. I, I enjoy them all the way through, like, from the Nintendo onwards, I don't... I think that was the turning point for where games. People, people like Atari, I can't get away with them. Too much no, imagination yeah. needed, you know. It was I mean, like I've got my Spectrum, but that there is more purely for nostalgia. I'll, yeah, I'll have the odd go, but I'll never get as much time as some other ones. Well, it's like I said, I could I could have had that, but I just I I just looked yeah. and thought, I'm never never going to play. Honestly, it. every couple of months I'll probably fire it up for a night of nostalgia, and mm. but I'll I'll not. And I'll I'll not finish a game. I know I'll probably have a quick bash, and I'll probably get sick after five minutes of each game. Like, oh, I'm, I'll remember that one now. And I know exactly how I'll play it. Yeah. But every couple of months. But for me, it was worth it, just for that bit of nostalgia. Oh yeah, it was it was a lovely package. Like really, really nice, nice daily did you mm. and everything. Well, that's fair. Girls like Menes and Snares. I, I can once a week. I'll be on one of them. Oh yeah. Well, I, I try to get on a system. I don't play every night now because. I've just been, I've been cleaning all my consoles, taking them apart, and the, cleaning all the contacts on the stuff and everything. It just, I'm trying, I'm trying to play more now, but yeah, every every night if if I can, I'll have a go. But it's it's turned to about three or four times a week for me, every other day ish. So, 
and that's like from anywhere from Nintendo to Xbox One. Yeah, just anything and at, all gaming. Well, at the moment, I'm playing Xbox and Xbox One, original Xbox and Xbox One, with a bit of NES thrown in on the side. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm way here with a double of NES and SNES when I feel like it. Mm hmm. Oh, but like you're saying, I think that's my bit thing. I've rambled on. I don't know what sense that video made or anything like that. We'll see. It's um, it was kind of meant. The topic was meant to be how gaming has changed and just a general conversation. I think it's it. more of our thoughts on how game has changed for us. Yeah. I mean, I think our points are valid about the main things is the graphics, the getting rid of continues and limited amount of lives, which makes the story. A lot longer, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and difficulties kind of been dumbed down, so they've had to kind of not. Why not? <sighs> the really? learning curve. They've put a big steep learning curve in, which puts me off a lot yeah, more than the, games. The big tutorials and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like press A to jump. It's like I'm not an idiot. Use your right analog stick to look, left analog yeah. stick to walk. It's like for God's sake. I think sake, they said man. like the auto save thing. That's the kind of ruined game a bit. Cause auto like save. Well, I, I don't mind if they well, like you say, no, when you die, no, when you get brought back, like a minute before, and it's just kind of like, you, you don't. Well, a lot of things have auto save and then a main save, so you can have like I always yeah. have at least two like, save states. Obviously, for me now playing Breath of the Wild, I know that it's going auto save, so I'll sometimes die on purpose. If I go somewhere, I think, oh, it's just easy to die because I'm not going to get brought back around here. So it, there's no sense of danger, or is it, oh, I'm mm. going to die and I'm not going to do this. It's kind of like. If I get killed, I'll have enough water. I'll have enough water. Because I'd rather no... than using your fruit, eating your fruit. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. You'd just rather die and start back the, around the corner there's again. There's no being back on the on the final boss with two lives left, and then you die, you're like, damn, I'm last life. And if I get killed, I'll have to start the game again. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that way back to the 8 mm. 16 bit. It's kind of, oh, I'm dead. Well, I'll have another go. And they just keep getting reloaded. And same with the Grand Theft Auto, it's all, all the auto saving. Well, it just saves it before. Where is it? The eight and sixteen bit. Well, it's just start your mission from the beginning on the, yeah. or at a certain point on the mission because some of the missions are quite long. So you, yeah. yeah, I see what you mean by auto save ruining it, but it it enables you to complete games. Yeah, well, I suppose. How when, many of your original when, games could you complete? Yeah, when they're such long games, that's what I mean. Yeah. With games being so long now, you you couldn't. You because could. they've got a, they've they've put so much work into giving yeah. you a good story. Yeah, you could. want you to see the yeah, story. You, you couldn't have three continues on Grand Theft Auto, could you? And after no. the third continue, you have to start the whole game again. Oh. And be... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's the yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. But... Right. Well, come on. Anyway, let's yeah. say bye again. Let's try. Uh, yeah. Let's try and finish this video again, Carl. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's it. Bye. Yeah, that's it. I um, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. We shall see you in the next one.